Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to set up the our first client site web part, uh, which is going to be the Hello World web, web part in uh, the new SharePoint development framework. Now, if you go to uh, the YouTube uh, video of day two, uh, just O365 Dev Challenge day two, uh, you hit show, show more, and then if you click on this first link, that's going to get you to the uh, tutorial, the details that we walk that we will use to set up. Uh, the hello world web part so the for, for the first one uh, basically you want to launch the command um, prompt and again I'm gonna just play it safe and run this in administrative mode sorry we have this set up there um, and then what I'm gonna do because now what you uh, I have already created on my C drive uh, subdirectory code SPFX I've created this as my parent uh, folder with the understanding that all the projects that I'm going to play around with with the SharePoint development framework uh, will uh, reside uh, within uh, this folder structure here. So understand that I'm going to just go to the command prompt, do a CD to change the directory, specify that path, and now I'm there. So the first command uh, within the tutorial is to do a make directory, and then we're going to change into that directory. So I want to do all of that within the SPFX folder. So I'm gonna just do an MD and I'm just call this uh, Hello World uh, web part. And then hit enter. And then I'm gonna do a change directory to that folder. So now I'm there. And then if I go back to the file system, you will see that MD did indeed create that folder. So we're good there. So now in the tutorial, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say uh, to go ahead and do the Yeoman generator for a SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint uh, project. And I assume this would be, this is the one needed for a client site, client web part project. So now uh, I'm going to just execute that uh, in the directory that I want all of these uh, project files to, to reside in. So now it's asking me, and this is somewhat similar to Visual Studio, right? You know, if we were doing like a SharePoint uh, solution template, if we were doing WSP development, uh, it's just prompting for a solution name. Uh, and then the default name is in parentheses. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit enter, use that default name. And then here you can arrow up or down to see if they use the current folder or if you want to create a new subfolder. Since we already created the folder, I'm going to go ahead and use current. And then what is the name? Um, I believe this is the name of the web part. It's going to be hello world. Hit enter. And then the website description. Again, the default is that. Are we going we to say Deshaun is testing this out. And then hit enter. And then here you got three, it seems like uh, three different frameworks you can base your client side web part off of. Uh, the tutorial says to use no JavaScript web framework, and I think that's the one I'm going to select. But I'm very interested to see what the difference would be, you know, if I do select a React or, you know, versus a Knockout and, and so forth. So for right now, for this fir first one, I'm going to just do no JavaScript. And now it seems like it's going to go ahead and create. Um, all the needed files for this project. So as of right now, what I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and pause the video. And then once this completes, I'll resume. Okay, so that process has completed. And now we should be able to go to that directory and see all the solution files are there. So they, they are there. So now what I can do, there's two ways that you can launch Visual Studio Code. You can do code dot and that launches uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, interesting, because I thought it would launch. Let me try it again. I thought it would launch the project files there. Oh, I forgot to die. I just typed in code, so it just launched a blank um, IDE. OK, so if you do code space dot, that will launch um, the project uh, in Visual Studio Code. And now, as you kind of, you can browse through through all of this, uh, I'm not 100%. It seems like there is some some uh, stage or can't data here uh, wrapped in a JSON document. And then you have the note modules, so I have no idea what those are. And then you have like the source web part. And this is actually 
our hello world web part here and then you have the TypeScript which is used uh, as the uh, JavaScript all right this is what you code in then once it's compiled it'll be compiled down to uh, standard JavaScript and then this is a manifest.json which is probably very similar to your um, I think I believe it will see the web part file or the elements file in Visual Studio if you're creating a uh, an old school type web part where you can specify uh, the group uh, the title and then the brief description all for uh, the web part itself and then um, this seems like these are related to the uh, web part properties as it states there. So I, I, again, this is I'm, I'm really starting to to understand and learn this. So I'm not 100 percent on how all these files are related and what um, part they play in the web part that's actually um, generated. But uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our environment's all wired up. So we were able to successfully create a project. We can bring it up in Visual Studio Code. And now uh, let's go ahead and launch it. So what we want to do, um, I, I know it's git serve, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just git serve in the hello world directory. So whatever you do, this command git um, gulp serve, this is where it's going to, uh, serve up the web part so let's see what happens and this should be very similar to like a run and debug mode um, for a project in Visual Studio okay so now we get this uh, so this is where the workbench uh, kicks in right now I don't think this this is not now this this is something this is actually very interesting so what we're we looking at now I mean this is my machine name to my laptop here and then this is uh, a port this page is not being served up by IS Express as if if it was in Visual Studio uh, Enterprise. With Visual Studio Code, there is no uh, web server per se, uh, part, uh, part of the IDE. And I think that's where the Node.js piece comes into play. Now, I was um, clicking on on these different options, right? And it seems like that takes me to like a mobile view emulator um, of sorts right you know just so you can test the responsiveness of the design and then this one here once I click that plus sign I can add these wet parts in so that's very similar to uh, how you add wet parts in uh, we're well, not similar but it's the same concept of adding the wet part in in, in the legacy or the classic uh, SharePoint page but I think what it is with this modern UI this is all in context, right? So from a uh, from a uh, content contributor standpoint, or um, someone who's creating copy, they do not have to go through all those clicks with you know selecting the the zone, then going to the ribbon, and adding in the wet part based on that zone, and all the other good stuff. I mean, it's all in line, uh, which is cool. Now, when you click on this pencil here, it pops open the wet part property for that respective wet part and I can come in here and do like Deshaun123 and you notice as I type that you can see that the real time this gets updated and I, that's the react framework and, and that's why it's very interesting like even though I did not select react as the project based template I know that uh, this is indeed using react because I believe uh, this workbench HTML brings react into the picture now here, so that's my Deshaun123, let me do Madison456. And it seems to be playing as nice where, you know, each one of these are given their own instance. Um, and then the, the property is only relevant to the instance or, you know, um, the wet part that's selected. So let me try Jerry. Okay, so that seems to be looking fine. Now, if I go back, uh, and this is this is actually pretty interesting stuff here. If I go back and I believe it's this wet hello wet part TS. Um I, this is one piece I do not like. I do not like all this embedded HTML uh in the JavaScript treated as a string. Uh I just think that it's just so messy. 
and this indentation that's all manual right i mean you're not going to be able to do like a control kd or whatever the the code formatting uh shortcut is for visual studio code uh in order to get this formatted nice and you know if all of this was flat this indentation is what's required right uh, you're not going to get that. So for all these divs and make sure that they're nested and all this other good stuff, you have to kind of do that manually. Now, if I compare the text here, welcome to SharePoint. Uh, welcome to SharePoint. So here's the change. Oh, and this is where it's picking the description up from the web part property, which is interesting. So I can, I can type this in, welcome DLC to SharePoint. Now, this is cool. Um, and then I haven't hit save yet, but now if I do control S, hit save. And then as soon as I hit save, this gets updated automatically. And then you can see the update automatically in my local host, which is cool. Um, we're not in the tenant. And now that's another thing I had to, it kind of faked me out a little bit because this, uh, this, this Chrome here looks like the tenant. But when you start to click around, where normally this would be, all be clickable and my preview details would be there, um, it's not there. So I think, you know, just a, as a facade, and I'm not sure if this is just you in the field that says, yeah, you're, you're playing around with a wet part. And it's, um, you know, this is what it would look like when you actually deploy it out. Now, all of this data is local, right? I, I don't see anything that's pulling. Welcome DLC, the SharePoint, customized SharePoint experience wet part. I don't see anything that's pulling um, real SharePoint data from my dev tenant, which I believe is the next tutorial. So we'll cover that in the next video. But I think as of for now, this is actually pretty awesome. And I think if we made it this far, at least we know that, you know, we got Node.js running correctly. We got Yeoman. We were able to generate a project, so that's running correctly. Um, Gulp is installed as a utility or as a task runner. That's running correctly because it was able to serve up the page. So um, I think I'm feeling good about this. So, you know, just play around with it. Uh, definitely start, you know, I'm just clicking around, browsing around, really trying to get a, a better understanding of how all these files are interrelated and how they're all connected. So I'm sure I would break some things and uh, probably just have to recreate this Yeoman generator. Um, over and over again in different subdirectories, but uh, for the most part, this is uh, really cool, really cool.